This one's gonna be fun. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. We've been bombarded with questions regarding what's in this box. Now, not specifically this one, but uh, for us to do a review on this type of bike, let me give you a hint. It's not a bike, <laughs> technically. We've got a lot of people that just need to get around inside the campgrounds, maybe go to the, the camp store, uh, possibly just outside of the gate of their RV park across the street to the gas station. Uh, when we were in Southgate in Vero Beach, if you guys remember, we had a uh, Wawa that was right across the street that we loved to go to all the time. And we've had tenants that were in that park that wanted to do an electric bike, but they were just a little bit afraid. They didn't know if they could do it. So the solution is in this box and we finally got a chance to look at one. So the size of the box here, again, hard to see on camera, is 40 by 30 by 30. The weight of this box as it sits, when you first get it, is 117 pounds. The bike inside, 90 pounds. So you're not dealing with something that's relatively light. You're dealing with something that's pretty heavy. But once you have this unloaded, you should still be able to get it through just a, a couple friends helping lifting into the back of a truck or possibly uh, putting inside the pass through of a larger fifth wheel or uh, potentially motorhomes have some really big bays in them. That's basically what this thing's set up for. And what is it? It's 95% assembled inside this box. You got an e-trike. Yes, we finally got an e-trike. Now this is a folding e-trike. This is from a company, Mooncool, as you can see on the box. And though they're relatively new, they, they've only been in business for about three years now. Uh, they've got some really nice offerings and they also offer another trike that is not folding, but it's more of a standard trike with standard tires on it. Uh, this one has the bigger tires on it, which a lot of people want because of that comfortable ride that it offers. Even though this has a front suspension, those tires all the way around really help out quite a bit. Our FedEx people seem to have a tendency to really, really beat these things up. So this is a good sign that it comes in just a single box <laughs> that <laughs> is still in a shape of a box. That it's packaged very well for protection. Um, they have all the individual bars of the rear basket wrapped. That's nice. And then as far as the uh, fenders, they're all packaged. They even have protective uh, covers over the tail lights because it does have um, individual tail lights there, which is really good. So uh, good, good for the packaging. I, I like the fact that they've kept it as minimal as possible. There's none of that really heavy block foam that you find that breaks away, you know, and causes a mess. I like that. They're using the cardboard structure more than anything else. And it's a lot easier to recycle cardboard than it is any kind of styrofoam. So uh, kudos to that. I didn't have to cut this top off. There's some tabs that you just squeeze the middle. It unlocks them. You tilt them down and then lift them out. That would have released the outer box from the inside box without me cutting all that off. The flap here. And that's it. It actually gives you a work surface now using the cardboard that was part of the crate. You have to have basic mechanical skills to put this stuff together and basic mechanical tools. It will come with a tool kit. I found that most of these e-bikes, although it comes with a tool kit, I've always had to grab another wrench or another uh, Torx bit or something like that to make it a little bit easier on myself. This is what it's going to look like when all the packaging is off. All except I see the kickstand still has a, a bit of a, a, I don't know, some kind of protective pad there I got to pull off. But I did disconnect everything uh, as far as from the packaging, except for one thing. I wanted to point this out on both the rear and the front of the fenders. Make sure you pull this styrofoam out of here. That's a nice color. Now, all their colors are kind of bright. They're kind of girly. I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> I'm perfectly... Uh, 
uh, comfortable in my skin <laughs> regarding the color of bike that I'm riding. Uh, but I do like that it's a bright color. I've always said that all these e-bikes that they're making that are black, what, I don't know what they're thinking. You need to be seen. These things need to be really bright. They need to be a bright color. Fortunately for Mukul here, all of theirs is really bright. And it's like a matte finish. Um, I do want to talk about the size though of this. They're telling us that based on the uh, dimensions of the bike, that the people that should be riding this, it's for a little bit on the shorter side. Uh, you're talking five foot two, I believe, um, up to six foot. And even though the seat posts adjust quite a bit, which we'll talk about the seat here in a second, I don't believe these are for taller riders. Uh, you could probably get away with it, but just be aware that's what they're saying. And I, I kind of agree. Uh, the battery obviously is not in the frame, even though it's a folding situation. It's in the, uh, the cradle that's built into the back underneath the seat. Uh, you can charge with the battery on or off. I want to talk about this motor though, very unique in the axle design in that this is a slip differential, I guess you could say, and that is the motor is going to drive the rear axle, but it has a differentiating system inside that's just like your car differential so that whenever you go around a corner, you do not lose traction with the tire that's on the inside of your turn. It's a very basic principle that when you make a turn with something that has an axle on it, the tire on the inside of the turn, like if you're turning to the left, that's kind of why I'm pointing to the left tire. If you're turning to the left, the left tire travels less than the outside tire does. So the outside tire is making all kinds of crazy traction and going around. In the meantime, the inside tire doesn't need to move that fast. And usually what happens is it skips or it skids and you lose traction and it makes it uncomfortable to ride. It could potentially make it unsafe to ride, but the fact that it has a differential in it, they've accomplished what most manufa automotive manufacturers have already done years and years ago, and that is make them uh, operate uh, unequal so they, they can navigate a corner without any problems. All right, let's go check out the components now. So although the seat uh, was assembled, I wanted to pull that off. Let's go ahead and show you here. There's the adjustment of the seat and look how wide, I don't know if this is gonna come off on camera at all. My hands aren't small. They are not small at all. And that is a big seat. That's, that's a very wide seat. So that's good. I, I like that. Um, and of course there's adjustments to be had inside here to adjust the angle of the seat. Apologize for the noise. We got uh, some mowing going on today. You also get the headlight, which looks to be pretty darn big. Um, that usually translates into a good projector uh, that's really bright. We'll see about that. The charger on this is relatively large, but it is only a two amp charger. The battery though is kind of matched to this. That makes sense. Here's some components for ma uh, mounting the rack. We'll talk about that in a second. And uh, of course your wheel and tire. Here's an extension cable that's needed for the headlight most likely. Um, yeah, it's a yellow. So usually they match the colors and you can see yellow, yellow. And that's because the rack is going to be out front if you decide to mount it. It is kind of an option if you don't want to. And then there's a basket. Obviously this basket is not an option that is something you have to buy. It comes with the bike, your front fender, these are metal fenders. Metal fenders are awesome as long as they're mounted correctly and they don't rattle. That's the hardest part is just to make sure that they don't rattle. You've got a 180 millimeter brake disc on here and these tires are a 20 by three. These are not four inch, they're three inch. A lot of people are probably screaming right now saying, oh, I don't know. Well, I'm gonna tell you, I do know that a three inch is just fine for what I talked about. You don't necessarily need a four inch tire unless you're going to attempt a beach ride. I'm gonna tell you about beach rides. Beach rides are just like camping on the beach. Everybody thinks, oh, I'd love to camp on the beach or camp on the ocean. Um, I would love to uh, have a private time on a beach blanket with my significant other. And once the, the actual thing is happening. <laughs> Let's just say that. It's not that great. Uh, so as far as riding these on the beach, it would have to be a perfect situation. You'd have to have the perfect hard pack. You'd have to have the perfect approach. Uh, it just doesn't work that well. Now on trails, I'm sure it's fine, but 
you don't want to be pushing a trike on the beach to get it through the soft sand because you're stuck. I mean, it's, it's like motorcycles. I mean, I've seen motorcycles that are stuck at the beach when they go through the soft sand. So you don't want to do that. The nice thing about the tires are they are bigger than the standard, you know, the standard little skinny tire and they will give you some comfort based on what you inflate them to. What I say to do is you inflate all the tires to what they tell you to inflate them to, first of all, and then adjust it accordingly. I would never go below, let's say 15 pounds of pressure. I would always keep it above that. So let's go ahead and get this thing assembled. It's not, it really actually don't look that difficult. It looks pretty standard. Like I said, you're gonna, uh, everything's covered in the manual. Um, they have pictures. Uh, they tell you step by step. And the, uh, you know, it's the fender, the handlebars, uh, which just slide in since this is a folding setup. And um, yeah, and then the, the, the wheel and tire using the skewer that they give you, uh, that goes through, you know, the, the front starting on the disc brake side. And uh, yeah, I, I don't think this is gonna be difficult at all. I can't wait to see the lights though. You know, they have these lights on the outside here on the fenders, in addition to a standard tail light and it's got turn signals. Okay, we need to give a round of applause to this company for the trike they put together, and I'll tell you why. It has a lot more power than I expected. Now, this is only a 500 watt motor with 750 peak. I've had bikes that are 750 watt that are 1500 watt peak, and for how heavy this bike is, and for how heavy I am, I'm six foot, 270 pounds. The bike has some good low end takeoff. I was surprised. I was a little shocked by it, tell you the truth. I don't, I, you know what I think it is? I think it's the gearing. I think it's a gear reduction thing. It's a low end gearing that they have. Remember, this doesn't have um, a shifter on it. This is just one single pedal speed. But the fact that they've got it going through a jack shaft here um, you know, the electric motor, I think that they can dial in the amount of low end torque that they want. And it is a torquey little bike. What that translates into as far as, you know, long range or something, they don't even advertise this as long range. They don't say this is a long range bike. This is a short distance commuter. Personally, myself, I don't think that I would do much more than seven miles in each direction just to play it safe. If you want to get around that, Get hold of the company, order another um, battery. The battery's easily to be, you know, remove and change and you have two racks that they give you with the bike. So with all that extra size that's available as far as storage, uh, go ahead and take, a, you know, an extra battery and put it in and know that you can run one entirely down and whenever you're done, uh, you know, swap the battery. It's really easy to do. The keys are just for the battery, by the way, just to release it. It doesn't turn it on. It doesn't turn it off. That's all done with the controller up here. This is a really basic controller that they give you, but you really don't need much more. And I like that, the key, you know, they did that. It keeps the price point a little bit lower. Um, the thing that I do like, it does come with a hydraulic brakes. Now, I didn't expect that. I, I thought this was going to be some sort of cable activation, especially when you have a, a longer, you know, bike set up like this. But it is a hydraulic, which was surprising. Big disc brakes on the rear axle. You can see back here, and I've already talked about the front. A nice headlight. Uh, I still have the protective plastic on there. I need to pull that off, but it is a very bright headlight. I know that's not going to come out in the middle of the day here, but more importantly, you're going to like this a lot at least I do, is the tail lights, And they are very pronounced. Now, the reflector always wins whenever it's nighttime, but they're gonna tell you, and I agree, um, all electric bikes are just really hard to see at night. Now, in this case, if you wanna put additional lights, you got plenty of room to do so. All right, so this is uh, what the lights look like from the backside, and as you might imagine, the outsides uh, are marker lights, but they are also brake lights. I, I did not think that they were gonna make them brake lights. Now, the thing that I wish they would have done, and I'm sure this is something they could improve on um, in the future, is the turn signals, because it does come with turn signals, unfortunately flash on the inside in that small light. I would have rather seen the turn signals be the outer lights, uh, just because it's hard to tell whenever you have a, a light that's in the center 
which direction necessarily you're turning there. I mean, uh, I would pay more attention to the fender uh, flashing, but they could flash together, I suppose. Um, but it's really nice. I, I like that they, they did a good job. Uh, there's, there's a decent amount of lights back there. Way to go taking advantage of all that extra space that they have on the back. Uh, it's, it's, it's a good idea and a lot of people probably wouldn't have done it and I'm glad that they did. So the overall look of the bike is what you would expect from a trike. I mean, it's not gonna be overly stylish. And I'll tell you that most of the people that are wanting to ride these, they don't wanna ride ugly bikes, but they wanna ride comfortable bikes. They wanna be comfortable. And that's why the handlebars are in such an upright position. That's why the seat is gigantic. It's still, it's the biggest seat that we've ever owned. And the bike overall looks good. It really looks good. Now you have your front rack here, front basket, and you don't have to put this on, but it does come with it. Um, or you could use just the rack without the basket. Um, I, it's up to you. I mean, they include it. Why wouldn't you? you know, use it. Very, very nice styling. All right, so now for the uh, trained bear act, that's gonna be me. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this for a ride around the yard real quick here and uh, show you what it's like. <laughs> it's really hard, I I'm gonna tell you. If you guys haven't rode a trike, the difference is, is you ride an e-bike, you ride it. On a trike, you drive it. You don't ride it, you drive it. So you have to sit back, not worry so much about your balance, and make sure that you slow down for the curves and turns and you steer it. There's gonna be some weight distribution that you're going to do with your body that's a little bit different than with an e-bike. But I have found most people that are uncomfortable riding e-bikes can get themselves into a trike and ride that pretty comfortably. You gotta remember that there's no chance of falling down on this one, just falling off or going too fast and tipping. You do have to worry about that at speed. That's one of the reasons that they've limited themselves to you know, a speed of like 16 miles an hour, uh, a top speed. They don't want you going very fast on this. Neither, I, I, don't, I love going fast. I love going fast. I don't think I'd wanna go much faster than that on this just because of the inherent issues that comes along with the trike. This is made for nice, slow transportation, and in this case, to be able to carry stuff pretty easily. Um, this might be something that we would think about keeping in our arsenal. <laughs> We're getting older, you know, and this would be nice and easy just to pop up on and go for a little ride. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, definitely can pick up. How's that? Has this thing not got kick or what? <laughs> it's pretty fun. I want to do that again. <laughs> Remember, I'm six foot, 270 pounds, and this thing has got some low end grunt. That is awesome. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I told you you drive it.
So what about that? Perfect size. What about it though? Um, you gotta, like I said, it takes you a second to figure it out. Yeah. You gotta definitely not get on it and think that you know what you're doing. Right? Yeah. Because I'm always like what you just said. You gotta drive it, not ride it. Yeah. And I, I'll go out here and I can't even turn. Right, right. <laughs> but uh, it's cool. It's a perfect size. Yeah, she's five foot four. Yeah. And I and feel the seat. But yeah, the, it's it's perfect. Yeah. It, I've, I, I'll be honest. If we were permanent at a campground, why not this? Look at how much groceries yeah. you could load up with that yeah. stuff. All right. Well, I wanted to see what you look like on it. <laughs> We got a pretty bumpy road out here. And there the speed cuts off. Actually, it says I'm doing 19. Wow, uh, that did a lot better than I thought. Now, we have a very rough, rough road. You can see the headlight, actually. I need to probably readjust that because um, it bounced. It, 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 it's, a, it's a rough road out there. The concrete looks like my driveway, and unfortunately, it's a public road. So, Moon Cool. This is the TK1. They also make, like I said, a, a, a little bit lesser of a, a step-through design trike um, that probably could potentially suit your needs but this is the top of the line for them and i'm going to have to say that this competes very well with a lot of the other brands that are out there uh, this is very very good this is a nice unit so the links will be in the description down below click the link it'll take you to their site look through what they have to offer they also offer a couple of their you know full-size regular e-bikes but I'll tell you, for them to only be in business for, like I say, about three years now, they did a good job. This is very, very good. So, Mooncool, a thumbs up. I am impressed. And the power that you've got out of this thing is pretty darn good. Um, for it only being 500 watt, I am shocked. And the colors, too. Good deal. All the way around. All right, guys. As always, we hope to see you out there. Bye.